Boopity boop 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 boop. All right. Oh man. Congratulations to you for being here. Uh, good job. Glad that you guys are here. Uh, it's time for episode one one three five. Yeah, student of the gun radio one one three five. And today we're going to talk about. <clears throat> we got a dura coat for you. We got a brown owls for you. Uh, we've got a student of the gun homeroom from crossbreed for you. We're going to talk about how the. In case you're wondering, you're like, I don't believe it. I have a friend who says that you're full, that you lie. Like, okay, cool. Uh, you, the American gun owner, need to be disarmed because the American government has seems to have a complete and total inability or lack of desire. Would you boys say that it's not an inability, it's a lack of desire to, to keep violent felons in jails? What was the other option? Uh, an inability. Inability. Um, yeah, it's definitely a lack of desire because yeah. the ability is there. The infrastructure yeah, they, they is could. There. You know, they had him in a cell and they're like, well, he was in a cell, but well, he jailbreaked. But we had jailbreak. to let him out because of racism. What are, what are you talking about? Because we got to put Mike Tyson in there. Uh, oh, don't get me yeah, started. I, on that. I just saw that video. So, yeah. And, did you say that to me? Uh, did somebody no, else said somebody else did but that the day that broke your mom came in and she's like did you see it and i said no because i was sitting i was sitting there in, in the chair having my coffee and the first may may that popped up was you know that little puppet character that's looking at you and then looking away that yeah. May. yeah it was and on the top of it it said the air marshal on mike tyson's flight <laughs> he said yeah and, uh, I, and so i'm like okay uh, what is going on yeah and your mom's like oh you didn't hear mike tyson punched the guy out on the airplane you know so i'm trying to watch it i'm trying to see the video and I, I pull up the first i search it mike tyson airlines or whatever and the first video is a clip of the guy harassing him and then it cuts and there's no punching and then it's the guy like holding his head so i apparently i i can't see mike punching him because it's too violent or whatever and then it goes from that straight to a spokesman from the San Francisco Police Department who said that that they have launched a full investigation. And I was like, just stop. You can just stop right there, you fruitcake. You mean the San Francisco Police Department, the same one that looks the other way when people are defecating on the sidewalks in the middle of the day? And they just look the other way. The yeah. same one that were it the same San Francisco where you can shoot heroin on the BART train and they'll then they do nothing about it. But yeah. you can't eat a sandwich. Remember yeah, that? you can Yeah, oh yeah. You can fill a shopping cart full of Nikes and walk out the front door and they do nothing. We're talking about San Francisco mm -hmm. and uh God must know. Well he clearly knows. But he sent me a reminder to pray at 830 this morning, which is just now for San Francisco. Pray, pr yep, pray for San Francisco. I got a notification I, on my phone. That, I, I, the Bible I, app I said, remember pray, to pray. that uh, fire and brimstone rains down upon it. If you pick if you I mean, I'm not going to go too far into it. But if you pick it up, pick up the Bible, go to Isaiah, go to Jeremiah, go to the book of uh, and you're going to find out what's going to happen to San Francisco. And it's not going to be pretty. It's it will be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city. So the the bold, brave, fearless members of the San Francisco Police Department have launched a full investigation into Mike Tyson. But this is the Jared, this is the same city where people have taken to leaving their cars open. Oh, yeah. Was that San Francisco? Yeah. That's right. So yeah, because they're leaving the back crime of the hatch open is so bad. Yeah, because remember, it wasn't even it wasn't even like trunks of cars. It was SUVs no, with the hatch yeah, open. They're, like the they're whole car. opening the hatch to make it easy for the criminals. So that, that doesn't. I mean that. So the crazy thing is, like for the owner of the car, it helps them a little bit because in the immediate short term, because they don't have to worry about broken windows and stuff or have to do anything with their car unless mm -hmm. the car stolen but for the long term it's enabling the thieves 
and the thieves are just going to get more bold. bolder and bolder. Well, and what do you do when the magpies fly in and crap all over your seats? That's that's true. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should. Zach, we'll throw that to you. Zach, what do you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> Play the music. Zach. Play the music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So if you are in the Discord, are, are there people listening, watching live in the yep. Discord? We've got a few okay. people in here. Yes, we need indeed. more. I'm going to send are. an email to people to read. There you go. All right. Do it. So do it. Uh, real quick, if you are not part of the Student of the Gun email list, uh, go there. Go to studentofthegun.com. You really should be. Join the email list. I'm about to send an email to everybody that's uh, in there so that they can join the live stream and enjoy the content. So yeah, if that's you'd right. like one of those reminders every week, then join the Student of the Gun email list. And of course, if you're not on the Student of the Gun email list, how are you going to know about all the amazing sales we have going on at shopsotg.com? Uh, I'll that's tell you right. what. Well, Zach sent an email the other day. Zach I think it's an email. It was, yeah, it was you about the... The slings and the sling bullets. Yep. I read that and it was enjoyable to read. Yeah. And I'm sure that our audience enjoyed it as well. So good job. You guys better be enjoying those emails. And also to those <laughs> of you who, who have ordered the slings, I hope you enjoy those when you get them. As of time of recording, they will be going out today. So yeah, those will be a, go, a, a gay old time. Dad, you've got yours, your sling and your bullets now. I do. You're I have to how use them. I have to practice with that thing. See, even I'm the pimp practice. likes them. Yeah, before the, the, they're cool. They're like death eggs. Yeah, death eggs. <laughs> they're, they're, you you <laughs> can be eggs. like the Easter bunny of death. Oh yeah. Uh, Where were with, you with on those. Easter? Yeah, we could have. Yeah, no that could have been the freaking promo. It's like get your uh, death eggs here. Well, you yeah. didn't have them yet. Yeah, we did. Did you? Did you had them? Yeah, we absolutely on Easter? had them. Oh, I didn't know. Anyway, uh, I didn't have them. Well, so, but let's yet. let's go ahead and Did jump we? into the Duracoat finished firearm of the week section. All right, this is going to be this is if this is why you watch live, because I'm going to tell Zach. I'm going to say to Zach, Zach, I see that. Uh, well, and if you guys subscribe, you, you get this stuff that the uh, the new article just dropped shot what? placement. <sighs> most targets are wrong, right? Now, I did a video. I did a video for that. And the video is not embedded in the article. Good point. Where it should be. So we're going to make sure that that works. But for our Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week, this is what I wanted to remind you of. You guys just uh, heard Jared asking you. He said, hey, have you signed up for? the newsletter for the and we don't spam you we give you good information well one of the good pieces of information that we just provided uh to you to the whole entire list for free is Duraco tips for beginners it was an article that i wrote and was published on april 18th and zach sent out an email uh, and he said hey here's a brand new article uh it's Duraco tips for beginners and if you'd like to uh to get some tips I got some tips. You want some tips? Okay, tips. You got any tips? Uh, I got some tips. So if you would have uh, been signed up for our newsletter, you would have gotten that in your inbox, and you would be a happy camper. And you're like, oh, look at all this information I'm getting for free from Paul Markle. Yeah. But uh, that's that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, it's the Duracoat Finish Firearms segment of the week, and uh, we did we did a an article. Uh, which has, it's not just me, in, in, embedded in the article is actually the interview with Steve Lauer, too, uh, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, so the main thing, and, and I don't want to beat a dead horse too much, but the main thing you need to remember to focus on uh, is your preparation, is your preparation. And this actually, Jared, you know, this this is a time when a lot of people will take their gun down or disassemble it further than they ever have ever. 
Uh, and for some of them, it'll be the first time that they ever, ever disassembled it and cleaned it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, when when you do a Duracoat job, the gun should be disassembled and cleaned like it is new, like it just came from the factory. Like they just put it together on the assembly line, put it in a cardboard box and shipped it to you. That's how it should look. There shouldn't be any grit, dirt, grease, you know, funk, nothing inside of that. All the parts that are supposed to be shiny silver and are now blackish gray uh clean those suckers off uh, and or if it's a super old gun you're like oh i got this gun from my uncle jim and he had it for 20 years before i got it from him so it has 37 years worth of hoppies number nine on it yeah you got you gotta get that hoppies number nine off man uh or rem oil or whatever your favorite you know i don't know uh wd-40 not wd yeah <laughs> uh yeah don't don't put all right Real quick aside, I'm glad I said that out loud. Do you guys know why you shouldn't use WD-40 on guns? Because it's a penetrating oil and it'll go through the It's the, a uh, penetrating primers. oil and, and it'll destroy your primers. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> back, yeah. back in the old days when people were dumb and didn't know any better, uh, they would spray WD-40 all over their guns thinking, oh, this is easy. It's it's in a spray can. I don't have to do any work. I'll just open up my gun, my my Smith & Wesson Model 10 revolver. I'll open it, whoosh, whoosh, spray it with WD-40, close it back up, and then all my rounds, none of my rounds went off. <laughs> all my primers are dead. Yeah. You know why? Because that WD-40 penetrated the primer pocket and killed it and this is when you say i don't believe it that would never happen <laughs> <laughs> cops aren't that lazy yeah they wouldn't take their glock apart and stick it in the washing machine and the dishwasher what that, that was, was a, a thing that was, that was a thing well was yep. it clean afterwards <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah oh man i mean I I mean, do you know how there, long? It I mean, takes? there are people that stick cast iron in the dishwashers too. So yeah, but I guess you know. I mean, if you had a Glock 17 and you wanted to clean it well, it would take you all of ten minutes between disassembling it, punching out the barrel with a brush, brushing the chamber out, taking a brush, running it in and out of the mag well, putting oil on it, and putting it back together. Yeah. Bing, bang, boom! Ten minutes, you're done. Yeah, if you can't devote ten minutes to cleaning your gun, you really shouldn't be carrying one. So, uh, do you know this person that did the dishwasher thing? Actually, I got that second hand. It was, was, oh, when, it I was, was gonna, when I was in the it was when I was in the police academy. Yeah, dang! I was like, I wonder if they took it apart or if they just left it in a full. piece. No, they disassembled like, it. Did they put other things in there with it? Did they just, I, was I, it just because that seems wasteful? Yeah, if you don't I, fill I, it they, up with dishes. They probably did. They put it on the top rack with the cups and the coffee oh, cups. That's funny. Oh, and the 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 WD forty thing. Yeah, that was that was a cop thing. They'd yeah. crack open their double action revolver and they would spray all over the cylinder, spin it, close it back up, put it in their holster. And lo and behold, they didn't. Uh, what? No, you don't take the rounds out. That takes uh, time. Why would I bother doing that? I don't have all that time to brush out and clean my gun. Oh, for those of you that think like that, it's, it's if only there's anybody, the, it's if there's only the anybody, tool I'm going to use to save yeah, my life. If there's anybody in this audience that thinks like that, I challenge you to a mind shift. <laughs> Every single uh, time you take your gun off or put your gun on or unload your gun or load your gun, it think of it as practice. Mm. What you're doing is do it the right way every time, yeah, even, right way. even when you're just taking your gun off or putting it on. Take it out of your holster, put it in your holster, just like you would, just with perfect, impeccable form. Do it that way. And you're getting practice. At, you know, at least 365 proper draws a year. Yep. Oh, uh, and well, so anyway, but getting back to the Duracoat, the reason when the reason we were on that is because, like I said, when you're going to Duracoat a gun, it should be clean like it was just put together in the factory. All the grit and grime and dirt and oil and, and grease or whatever, you got to get that crap off there. Uh, get it off of there 
and and rough it up. Now, there's a whole bunch of other steps. I'm not going to take the whole time going through every single step, but uh, embedded. And and if you missed it, uh, if you missed it, then in the uh, you want to throw the the link into the linkity link. Yeah, it's right there. It's studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. No, that takes you to uh, Duracoat University. But if we do the the tips, you all got any tips? I sure do. Do people even remember what movie that's from? Tropic Thunder. Thunder. That's right. You, you shred like a julienne salad. <laughs> you shred like a julienne salad. <laughs> you got any tips? Give me that map. <laughs> <laughs> We're super lost. <laughs> <laughs> We're not regular lost. We're super lost. Yes, indeed. Ah, uh, Lincoln Osiris, I miss you. All right, so that's the your Duraco finished firearm tip of the week. Uh, if you did not read that article, you probably should. And the link is in the show notes. So it's going to take you all of however long it takes you to open up the show notes and clickety clack that little link. And there you go. And if you had signed up for the student of the gun mailing list, you would have gotten this this beginner tips for Duracoat, Duracoat beginner tips sent directly to your inbox. And you could have read that and taken that knowledge and absorbed it up into your brain, man. And you'd have been good to go. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Da, 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 da. You have four days, one, two, three, four, to get in on the SOTG giveaway, SOTGgiveaway.com. If you go to SOTGgiveaway.com, you have four days to Sign up for the current SDS Imports giveaway, and it is the uh, the T SOS model 1911 A1 U.S. Army pistol, chambered in nine millimeter. Yes, ooh, snap! April is such a thief. I hate I, I hate thirty day months. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit this. Every time we have a month that only has thirty days in it, I get a little bit annoyed. Like f you. Quit trying to shortchange me. I say just add 31 days, make every month 31 except February and make February because nobody likes February anyway. Make February 22 days. Be done with but it. That's the month of love. No, it's not. Don't you know that? It's February is cold and wet and sleety and nasty. Nobody cares about well, February. If you lived in Sacramento, you wouldn't care. Hmm. Yeah, I, I could just um, step over giant piles of human excrement, try not to stick myself with used needles when I'm riding the BART train. But then again, you know, sitting on used needles is the last thing you need to worry about on the BART train because at any moment in time, a gang of hoodlums could jump on the train and just start beating you about the head and shoulders for your iPhone. So there's that. <laughs> and you're not allowed to defend yourself. Not even with a high point C9. Not even with a high point C9. Uh, do, do you guys remember my story about the creation of the high point 380? Uh, Way back yes. when. Yes. All right. The high, high point has a 380. And you're like, eh, 380 is dumb and I don't care and blah, 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 blah. Well, someone asked me. I was actually I was on with Bill Frady. Uh, last week I was on Lock and Load Radio. Lock and Load with Bill Frady, and we were talking about uh, people who get old as people get older and have wrist issues or hand issues happen. or grip issues or whatever. And he said, "Have you ever, you know, have you ever gotten questions, requests, you know, advice or whatever?" And I said, "Yeah, actually, that's uh, um, the 380." is a milder recoiling cartridge to the nine. You're like, oh, geez, come on, man. The nine is nothing. Well, it's nothing to you, but to a 68-year-old guy or a 68-year-old woman, it might be a lot. So calm down there, gorilla. Uh, way back when, when they first released the 380, they did it because the owner, the, the chief engineer uh, at High Point, had a friend who was an older gentleman who had arthritis in his arm, both hands. And uh, he, he couldn't, you know, most handguns recoiled just too much for him, right? And so he designed and built the high point frame in a 380. And if you know anything about the high point, it has a big, fat, huge, beefy slide. 
See, you say, oh, well, why don't you just get one of the compact 380s like an LCP or Caltech? I'm like, because those aren't for people with weak. Uh, holy crap. Have you ever shot one? Yeah, those are not like fully grown, strong adult males shoot the LCP and they're like, ow, that hurt. And and you ever try and grab the slide on, on a little baby 380? You're like, you can barely get it. And, and the recoil spring, you can ah. Imagine being 71 years old and trying to work the slide on one of those little baby 380s. You're like, yeah, that's t- that's hard for me to do, and I don't have arthritis. Imagine having arthritis and trying to do that. You're like, yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah, no kidding, that wouldn't work. But with the the CF380, the slide is big and beefy. You could there's a lot to grab onto, right? And once once you start pressing the trigger, the recoil is exceedingly mild. It's very mild. So before you poo poo. And, and hold your nose and make stink faces, you might want to think that not everybody is you. And sometimes, is that a baby? I hear a baby. Not everybody's you, and sometimes people need solutions. It's like, what did Dave Chappelle say? Modern problems require modern solutions. Ancient I'm, solutions. I'm Dave Chappelle, and I'm running for president. So there you go. All right, if you're a new listener, and even if you're not a new listener, uh, Shut that hole under your nose, open up both your ears, and listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called 7 Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. If you're like, well, how can I find out more about you? Google me. (laughs) But uh, uh, studentofthegun.com, buddy. There you go. There you go. All right. So, Moving on, we have another segment. It's called the Brownells Bullet Points, and this is generally where we talk about hardware, guns, sights, optics, and all that stuff. So the hardware section is brought to you by Brownells.com. Boom, bing, bang, boom, but a boom, 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 boom. All right, brownells.com, Brownell bullet points. Uh, and you guys, Brownells has a, a uh, you can go to, what is it? You text BRN to 556223. Yes. And you get on that. Yep. And every once in a while, you'll get a message from them on your phone that says, hey, we're running a sale on this. Would you, are you interested? It's not all the time. It's not even once a week. It's maybe a couple times a month. Uh, they have a sale or they have a promotion, they have something in stock and you'll get a little text bing, from your friends at Brownells. So there you go. All right. So uh, today we're going to talk about pieces, parts. And if you have an AK, an AKM, an AK pattern rifle, you know, what really gets on my nerves that uh, and Jared, nothing, what? Nothing. nothing, nothing gets on my nerves because F all you mother lovers. No, I'm kidding. Uh, when, when, you you here in the United States, we've been neutered because we allowed ourselves to be neutered. We laid down, we let the government cut our balls off and we didn't complain about it. Uh, people say that's not an AK-47. That's a neutered civilian AK style Kalashnikov rifle. I'm like, are you, do you feel better now? Do you, you feel better now? Yeah, I know that. I get that. I know that it's not a select fire Russian Ishmash freaking AK-47. And I know that they made upgrades to the AK-47 and started calling it the AKM. I'm aware of that. And I know that they made upgrades to the AKM and called the AK-74 and then the 101, then the 105. I know all that. Venture forth and fornicate yourself. The AK, the Automat Kalishnikova, right? Originally designed 
with a select fire safety lever. So the safety lever on the right side of the gun does three things. It keeps it. You either shuts the gun off, puts it on safe while it's shutting the gun off and putting it on safe. It also acts as a dust cover. You're like, what? Yeah, think about it. If you've got an AK, click the safety down and you see that little hole there where the bolt travels. Now click it back up. You're like, oh, it covered the hole. <laughs> it covered the hole. So this AK selector lever acts as a dust cover. <gasps> and on an original AK, Autovat Kalishnikova Ford Model 47, it also acted as a selector. You could go bang, 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 or bang, 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 bang. Right? Oh, okay. I get that. Now, back in the olden days, stick with me here, kids. Back in the olden days of the 70s and 80s and even right up to the early 90s, the number of United States manufactured AKs you could count on one hand minus fingers and thumbs. Uh, imagine you know your old shop teacher who was like this, you know, that your shop mm -hmm. teacher was like that. Um, that's how many fingers you, they didn't. And I go, no, they had AKs in America in the 80s. And the, yeah, they were all imported or they're imported as parts kits. And that's how they came here. Be and what happened when the when the wall came down, guys, when the wall came down, when the 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 Cold War ended, the Berlin Wall came down, the Soviet Union disbanded. Yet all these little countries now who used to be part of the Soviet Union, who are now their own independent countries once again, Bulgaria, Romania, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, you know, Poland, all, you fill in the blank, right? Hungary, just keep filling up. And Ukraine, the Ukraine. Uh, and they were all cash starved. They all needed money. They were they were all cash starved. But what did they have? I don't know, Paul, what did they have? Warehouses filled with arms. Rifles, machine guns, all kinds. Now, they couldn't sell Mr. and Mrs. America RPGs, but what they could sell was AK rifles, pistols, and parts kits. So what did American companies do? American import companies. They went to the former Soviet Union. They took American dollars, which back then were worth something, they took American dollars and they said to the, the Ukrainians or the Czechs or the Yugos or the whatever Serbians, they're like, hey, we'll give you American dollars for AK part kits, bolts, bolt carriers, triggers, you, know, you, you name it, right? All, all these things. And they brought them in under the you know, under the whatever, the regulations, and they assembled them in the United States with just enough American parts to make it, you know, whatever, not a foreign gun. Well, one of the things that they did, one of the things they bought was they bought selector levers, right? They bought AK safety selector levers from the former Soviet Union countries. And you say, who cares, Paul? Don't care. Well, you should care. Back in the old Soviet Union, did they build, did, were they making millions of semi-automatic AKs? Yeah, that's how they fought the war. Didn't you know that? No, they weren't. Yeah. They might have made some, a few. Ishmash might have made a few sporting guns. But 99% of the AKs were all select fire. Because, you know, in their mind, it would be stupid not to. They're like, I don't know why you would want that. Why would you want a semi-auto AK? Were you retarded? And we're like, yeah, we're, that's us. So we, we, we let the government neuter us back in 1938. You say, well, okay, who cares? How old is the AK that you have? Uh, I don't know. I traded a guy. I did some work for a guy, and he's like, I'll trade you this gun for, for you know, drywalling or roofing or i fixed the guy's truck and or i gave a guy was short on money and i gave him 300 400 bucks for this gun all right this is not a thing with new guns like right today in the united states 
you can buy a 100% made in the USA gun. Barrels, bolts, everything was made in America. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, that wasn't a thing. They were all, imp and they're still, today, we're still, you know, a AK manufacturers are still building them on parts kits, some parts kits. Well, an AK selector lever for a full auto gun has a wide fat tab on it. Uh, well, I've got an AK here. You want me to go get the AK and, and like show? We want to play show and tell on the on the video if you want, yeah, and we, and we can uh, fill in while you are gone, yeah. So yeah, this is something that I did not know about until Dad mentioned to me when I went over there. Guy, I obviously went over the for the weekend for his birthday. It was week, Pimp Hand's birthday. If you guys didn't know, so tell him happy birthday if you birthday, didn't know already. Birthday, birthday, birthday. Yeah, I had never heard about this until, and obviously I'm you know in this world as well. I had no idea this was a thing until he just told me, and he said he called one of his friends who was also in this world, and he was like, "What the hell are you talking about? No." Yeah. Yeah, that's right. something that I uh, I didn't know either. And and then he called me. He was talking to me about. it. I was like, oh, you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. So if you look right here, this if I'm showing the camera, this is a semi-auto selector lever. Yep, from my ODS 1775 gun from Occam Defense. It has a little thin tab. Now, if you're if yours has if this tab part right here is full or complete, some have holes in them, some don't. This is what can happen. If you push the safety up and you say, you're telling me I have a full auto selector lever in my semi-auto gun, does that mean I can shoot full auto? No, you can't shoot full auto with it, all right. But what will happen is if you rotate this, you, when you rotate the safety up, it usually it's it clicks and stops against the dust cover. Now you could be at a school, you could be wearing gloves, you could be all amped up. Maybe your safety is really well broken in. Maybe you took it and you bent it a little bit because it was stiff. If you swipe that safety up and it goes above the dust cover, what will happen? was that little full auto tab will push on the back of the, uh, oh, what's the, what's it, disconnector. It'll push on the back of the disconnector, which is on the trigger. It will disconnect the trigger and the hammer will fall. And you're like, yeah, but my finger's not on the trigger. Doesn't matter. If you push that lever up too high, if it goes above the lip of the dust cover, it will, disconnect the trigger and if there's a round in the chamber gun go boom yeah you stand there with look of surprise on face and you say yeah but i've had my gun for 187 years and that's never happened okay fine i, I don't care uh but you need to understand and you say well which guns have these in them i don't know over for over a period of about 20 years or more what was happening in the United States is companies were bringing in parts kits, right? They're buying these parts kits from fill in the blank, Poland, Romania, you know, Yugo, Serbia, whatever. And a lot of them had the full auto style tabs on the safety lever. And they put them together. Now you can put a full auto selector lever in a semi auto gun and it'll work just like a normal safety. The only problem or hazard is if you push that thing up, you know, you're, you're putting gorilla strength on it or you're in the middle of a class or you're, you're amped up and you got gloves in your hands and, like, boom, 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 and you stop and you, whoosh, you push that up and it goes click and it goes above um, the dust cover. That thing will go boom. If there's a round in the chamber, it's going to drop the hammer. Bam. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Now, here is the good thing. And uh, my buddy Brian Keeney at Occam Defense, uh, last week I was working on an AK, an older AK that I own, I've had for probably 15 years. And uh, um, I discovered this situation with it. And I called him up and I'm like, dude, what the, what's going on here? And he said, he, he basically he explained everything that I just explained to you, to me. He's like, yeah, these companies were bringing in parts kits. Uh, they were they were using parts kits to build their guns, and the 
you know, you could do, you know, it's one of those, it was economical. You say, well, we can spend $20 and manufacture this in the United States, or we can spend $1 and buy it from the Romanians. So which one are we going to do? Uh, we're going to buy 20 of them for $20 from the Romanians. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so uh, that's an issue. Now, here's the, the good news is a, a basic, this isn't a standard one. This is an, an enhanced one, whatever. But a standard semi-auto safety lever for an AK is about 20 bucks, 19.95, 21.95, whatever. You can swap them out. Bob's your uncle just like that right? They're easy to switch. You just need to know. So if you have an older model AK, uh, you know, I don't, you know, you say, well, oh, tell me which one. You know how many companies in the United States over the last 25, 30 years have imported and assembled AKs? Lots of them. So uh, if you've got an AK, if you've got a brand new one, like we've got the, you know, we got the brand new uh, BFT 47 from Century it, it, it's hundred. It's all made in the USA. It has a semi-auto selector lever. It has a uh, it has a pin plate in it, not a spring. It has a plate to hold the pins in. Um, all, all the good stuff on it. But that's something you need to know. If you've got an AK or you know somebody who has an AK, uh, if you want to be the smart guy in your group of friends, ask your buddy. You're like, hey man, you got an AK, right? He's like, yeah. How old is it? I don't know. I've had it for you know a lot of years, and I traded it from one guy to this guy. And you're like, take the dust cover off, and it's easy to see. Just clear the you know clear the gun, take the magazine out, clear it, take the dust cover off, take the uh, take the spring out, and it's easy to try. It, and we did a video, and Zach's going to actually put that video together. Um, and release it to you guys so you can see it, you know, but, uh, yeah, all you have to do, if you, if you're not sure, just like I said, here's what you do, clear the gun, right? Clear it out, take out the magazine, work the action, take the dust cover off, take the spring out and you can leave the bolt in, just leave the bolt in, take the lever and push it up and just keep pushing it up until it either stands straight up. If it stands straight up and nothing happens, then you're good. You're golden. It's it's a it has a little tiny tab on it, like it has a little the small tab. That means it's a semi-auto version. If it's got a hole in it and it's fat and wide, what's going to happen is it's going to come up. It's going to click the back of the disconnector. Hammer's going to fall, and you're going to go. You have that look in your face, you know, that look. That, oh, that just happened. There you go. How often has this happened in the real world? I don't know. Uh, I do know um, that it has happened in training classes. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a person uh, personally who. Uh, well, person personally, I, uh, you know, yeah, a person I, could, I could personally. No, I, I can say it. Uh, I talked to James. I talked to Jaeger about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, that happened in one of our classes. Yeah, he did a video a while back, but I think it yeah. got lost in the That's transition. The, yeah, everybody. I was talking to James and, you know, he he's done only a hundred million videos over the last 20 years and YouTube ch yanked his channel twice. And I believe that was one of the videos that they, that they jerked. Um, so if you're in this audience right now and, uh, you produce video content, go to Juxi. It's called J U X X I.com and load your content on there. You can import it directly from YouTube, get it over there. Uh, I know somebody that's involved in that. And it will not be pulled down. You won't have to worry about YouTube randomly deciding they don't yep. like you. Yeah. As, as long as you're, you know, following the, the guidelines, the, the guidelines yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. No snuff films. So uh, none of them naked people and all that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That, there's there's already a website for that. So you don't have yep. to worry about it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. And it's a thing you need to know about. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's. You could be, you could have one of these rifles and run it for years and 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 never, ever, ever have an issue. And then that one time you do, pow, you're like, what the what? <laughs> uh, hopefully you're following the, if you're following the four universal safety rules, even if you do have that, that, uh, that ND uh, or AD or AKD, if you have that AKD, uh, it's an, Autobat Kalishnikov discharge. <laughs> if you have that AKD, uh, if you're following the safety rules, nobody will get hurt, right? Right. 
So there you go. All right. It is time for me to hush my mouth and let Zach talk for a little bit. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. All righty then. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Student of the Gun Homeroom is brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters. And what is the themeology? I can tell you what the theme song is. The theme, the theme, the theme. I want you to write a theme. The themeology of Crossbreed Holsters homeroom as being dangerous on demand right because yes. you never do you never know do you know do you that's know why the theme song is called dangerous dangerous by madison rising that's right it's 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 symbiotic it all works together i think the word you're looking for is symbolism no i'm looking for symb- symbiotic there's there's a type of a form of synchronicity it's synchronistic people are like you're just making up words now no you're making up words like irregardless <laughs> that's not a word you just made that up uh, that's funny that's for you charles who isn't listening right now <laughs> uh, all right so uh use the promo code sotg that is sierra oscar tango golf when you go to crossbreed holsters save money get a good holster good belt good accessories uh, they got, they've been going bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S, bananas. It's Beethoven's favorite fruit. Beethoven. Yeah, that's right. They've been going bananas ha, ha, here. Ha, 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 ha. Did, so, you, did you get it? No, I have to, I have to, I have I to close it. that loop. I have to I close that it. loop for the audience. What is Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. Oh, wow. Yep. And that's the show, folks. Goodbye. Hey! <laughs> Take that home for your dad jokes. All right. We appreciate. <laughs> All right. So here's what what happened recently. Thanks to wide open spaces, who never found a a uh, they, they wide open spaces never met a pop up ad they didn't like. <laughs> wideopenspaces.com we never met a pop-up ad we didn't love hey did you uh, know that the the inventor of the pop-up ad came out a couple years ago was like yeah that's the biggest regret of my life is inventing i'm those. sorry yeah <laughs> I, I was gonna say i thought you i thought you were gonna say he killed himself no but he was very apologetic he was like i i had no idea i am sorry I they took my technology and they bastardized it Oh, so here up here in Wyoming, we have this place called Yellowstone National Park, and it's filled with God's creatures. It's filled with wolves and elk and bison and big old, big old brown bears. Um, And every year people come from all over the world and do stupid things. And try and take selfies with the bison or pet the calves. Hey, there's a little baby bison. There's a baby buffalo. Let's go pet it. And then they get stomped into the ground by the by the calf's mother. Uh, or or they get chased down and eaten by bears, or they get they get gored by elk because they were gonna take a picture with the elk. Don't do that. Or they get fried in the hot springs. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Now, this one, fortunately for the humans, for the 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 bipedal monsters, the the two legged creatures who hang out at at Yellowstone, they didn't get eaten, but they got to see what happens when nature does what nature does. And I I, I like this because it's the whole every every time we have an animal attack, it's always the pe. It's always the people's fault, right? Oh, did they have food in their tent? They should have known not to have food in their tent. Uh, they shouldn't be in in the bear's backyard. They shouldn't be where the bears are. 
Uh, they should have worn bear bells around their neck. Did they have their bear spray with them? It's always it's always the victim's fault. And every time a person gets killed by a bear, it's always their fault. It's never the bear's fault. It's like it's like these wildlife biologists live in California or something, you know. Well, what I want to know, Jared, in this particular instance is whose fault was this? Did, did uh, the tourist watching the video? It looked like the uh, the bison was provoking the bear. It was all right. It's a juvenile. All right, so you can read the story. It's a juvenile bison. Mm -hmm. It's not a full grown one, but it's not a calf either. It's kind of like a teenager, like a teenage bison. Now you're just you now remember, Jared, you're just seeing that as the video starting The the bison could have been defending itself from the bear. So if you watch the video, the first thing you see, is yeah, I, I want Zach bison. to play the video uh, because it says that the the person Douse who Michael Douse is the guy's name. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, but he Douse, allowed yeah. the video to be used and published by Jackson Hole Ecotour Adventures, who added some interesting and educational commentary to the clip. Oh, so there is a video down here underneath the title that says Grizzly Bear versus Bison filmed at Yellowstone National Park. I believe that's a Facebook embed. Zach, if you could play that video for the audience uh, and start the audio a little bit low because the lady's voice is kind of shocking at the beginning. Shocking. Is it the square one under related videos? It's underneath the title Grizzly Bear versus Bison filmed. Grizzly Bear versus Bison filmed. Filmed at Yellowstone National Park. It's got a little pop thing, an eco tour. It's got an eco tour. It's the tag first in the video in the article. Yeah. Not the fake video. There's a uh, fake video. I'm getting one video on this website on my end. It's the square one at the very bottom. No. I, I'll refresh the here, page. I'm going to put this. Yeah, in. you need to refresh the page. Here, I'm going to give for, you a link. It did that for me. There you go. There's a link. So the incident took place, place near the Grand Prismatic Overlook Trail, which is a particularly popular um, link didn't work. and therefore crowded at Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, the link. Just, okay, we're going to cut this. The link just took me to the exact same page I was already on. I've yes, got the that's fake where it's play. supposed to be. Okay, I'm going to describe the page to you. I've got a fake play button. Can you put it on story. your thing? Can't you put it on your screen? Yeah, sure. Put the page on the screen. Uh, yeah, we're cutting all this. This is why you watch live, guys. Yep. Okay, so here. Scroll down. Okay, this Scroll is what down. my nature looks like. My nature, my whatever. Uh, right there in that, that white space should be a video. Sweet. Well, I click on the white space. Why is there? Happens. All right, we got okay. the thing figured out. It was the only one that listened to Zach. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this video for us. All right, let's hear what yeah, she has buddy. to say. Hello, tours biologist Tenley here. We, uh, we're lucky enough to run into some footage that was taken in Yellowstone this week by Michael Dawes, who runs Jackson Hole Pop here in Jackson. If you've never tried that popcorn, pretty delicious. He was nice enough to allow us to go ahead and reuse some of this footage he took up with his family in Yellowstone, uh, kind of sort of near Old Faithful. Uh, where this young grizzly is attacking this young bison. Uh, really, really unbelievable stuff. I've personally never seen anything like it. The two were pretty evenly matched up until a certain point, and then um, the grizzly did eventually exhaust this bison to the point where he did eventually die from his wounds. But a couple kind of interesting things to see that are going on in this video. The first being that this... Uh, bison is pretty darn intelligent in that he immediately goes for the water. If he can get deep enough in the water where the grizzly is going to have to swim to attack him, that's going to take a lot of the edge off of the grizzly's advantage. So you can see he kind of heads down into the water here and Smart jumps one. in and attempt to try and get this grizzly off of him. Unfortunately, the water is not quite deep enough and the grizzly is able to uh, continue to uh, persist after this bison and, and killing bison is not an easy task for any animal, particularly not a grizzly. Uh, they're incredibly well armored. They've even got armoring on the back of their back with that hump. But you can see eventually, of course, uh, the bear was able to just successfully wear this bison down. So thanks very much, Mike Dawes, for letting us use this footage this week. It really is an incredible scene that you captured in Yellowstone. He's standing. He's like, I, I am triumphant. 
Yeah. And, I like how uh, when he was in the water, he hey, was looking around like, yeah, like is backup hey. coming or something? Is this an ambush? Yeah, yeah. what's up? So uh, send you guys send that, that popcorn guy a bill for the ad that we just ran for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And the the bison was very intelligent, like she said. Mm. And if I could just imagine it, it gets into the water and it's not deep enough. And it's like, oh, man, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> I don't know if it had that process, but the, the, my, I, the one of the reasons I wanted to do this, because we, we like to share wildlife. Uh, I like to share the wildlife stories here, but every bear attack is always it's always because humans did something wrong, right? Oh, they shouldn't have been hiking there or they should. You know, they didn't put their food in a bear bag or, you know, they they didn't. They wore deodorant that day or whatever. It's always it's always a human's fault. What's the and point so of I'm being looking, at the top of the food chain if you can't go wherever you want? Yeah, it, it's exactly. And so I'm looking through here. I'm like, where is the remember or or what is the other thing that we always get from the from the nature biologist? They're solitary, cu- curious, and this almost never happens. Yeah, these are very solitary, curious creatures. And and this almost never happens. It almost never happens, except that it happens all the freaking time. <laughs> This almost never happens until it does. Oh, uh, so I, th- I thought that was interesting. So when a bear and a bison get into it, well, that's what, what are we told? That's just part of nature. This is how nature is. And we need to understand it. And sometimes nature is brutal. Sometimes nature might seem ugly to us, but that's just part of nature. That's the circle of life. It's what Mufasa said. Well, or it's what the uh, remember when the when the 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 baboon held up the baby cub, and and everyone sang a song. It's the circle of life. So it's the circle of life when a bear kills a bison, and we're like, well, you know, just stuff happens. But if you're hiking in the thing, and a bear comes out, Rawr! and you have to kill it, they're like, shame on you. You shouldn't have been there. Or if you're if you're camped next to the post office in a tent and a bear pulls you out of your tent and kills you, well, they obviously had food in their tent and they should have known better. Why were they even there? In town next to the post office? I don't know. Why were they in town next to the post office? Remember that story? People were like, they shouldn't have been there. In town, they shouldn't have been there? Like in the city? Yeah, they should have known of the bear danger. I got an idea. How about you stop blaming the people? And yes, this is the circle of life. And yes, wild animals are wild animals. And yes, it could have been you. <laughs> That's a, the, My point is... If you're a visitor to Yellowstone, take yourself and put yourself in the place of that buffalo, the American bison. That could be you. No, a bear wouldn't attack a human and kill The water been, would have been deep enough for me because I would have just <laughs> laid down and I'd be fine. <laughs> I would have swum away. Yeah. I would have jumped off the bridge. And, you know, and the thing is, this didn't happen like way off in the wilderness. This is one of the most right by the popular, yeah. populous places in the park. So, you know, the bear smelled the people, right? The bear could smell the people. He's like, I smell people. And my point here is this. Wild animals are supposed to smell you and go the other way. They smell you like, that's a weird smell. That Maybe. Does- Maybe it, smell it like did, and that's elk. why it went for the bison. That just doesn't smell like an elk. It smells like people. Now, a you know how why it's really hard to hunt certain game species like deer and whatever? Because they smell you, and they go the other direction, away from you. Coyotes. Coyotes are hard to hunt because they, they have an excellent sense of smell. And if they wind you, they're gone. 
They are G-O-N-E gone. But if a wild animal smells you and keeps coming towards you on purpose, that means that for some reason it has lost its fear of man. And that's not a good thing. That's why, ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, you need to be dangerous on demand. There you God. go. D O D. All right, let's move on to the glorious, wonderful, stupendous People's Republic of California. Da, 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 da. This we got a story from Amoland.com from April 14th, 2022. Now, some of you might remember a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly this went. Oh, was, uh, no, 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 no. This happened the beginning. I believe it was the very beginning of April. And everybody's phones blew up instantly. Mass shooting in California. Shooting. Bah, mass shooting. Ah, mass shooting. Ah, ah. And this, we, we, all of us went. Ugh. We groaned and rolled our eyes, right? So. Within minutes of this going down, every news agency regurgitated the same mass shooting in California. And then, like clockwork, the the uh, the typical, the usual suspects, they, they ran, they tripped over themselves trying to get to microphones. This is why we need more gun control and ghost guns and 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 common sense reform mama na na ma, na well then the suspects were captured and arrested and we found out who they were and the media is like hey look over there is that elon musk what's he doing today I, well, he well, did buy twitter he bought twitter it, hey did you hear about twitter yeah oh yeah i know uh, so they instantly dropped the story and if you're a smart human and you pay attention to the world, you might be thinking, ah, oh, hold on a second. When that little white scumbag in South Carolina went into that church and shot all those people for weeks, like literally weeks, that was all the media talked about nonstop, day in, day out. What, what did he, he remember, they went to his house. They got footage from his bedroom and his garage and like he owned a rebel flag and it was tacked up in his bedroom. And so we had to. We had Amazon pulled down all their their Confederate flags, not going to sell them anymore. Why? Because it's a symbol of hate. And this this little this little piece of human excrement had one. He owned a rebel flag, a Confederate flag, and he committed a horrible hate crime. So we have to change the world because one piece of human filth committed an act of violence. So what I want to know is what kind of flags did Smiley Martin own? What kind of books and movies? I'm I'm guessing Smiley Martin doesn't have a very extensive library. (laughs) He might, he might, he might have shelves filled with books. We don't know. You don't know. (laughs) So this story, it went from breaking news, mass murder in California to, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Jared, why aren't we going to talk about that anymore? Well, because the suspect in Sacramento shooting was released from prison in February. Oh, just two months before he went on a shooting spree? One of two sibling suspects arrested in the aftermath of the deadly mass shooting in Sacramento was released from prison in February after having served less than half of a 10-year sentence. Less received, than half. Yeah. He received in January 2018 for domestic violence and assault. Now, this is according to the Sacramento Bee, and now social media is burning up with discussions about this revelation. By the way, this article is from Amoland.com. Yep. Now, a report has surfaced that one of the suspects, Smiley Martin, was paid $7,500 by Sacramento County to settle a lawsuit dating back to 2018. When Martin accused a jail guard of allowing him to be assaulted while in custody in the Sacramento County Jail. 
Okay, according to KOVR News, the local CBS affiliate, the county agreed to settle Smiley Martin's lawsuit rather than go to court because of the backup in courts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is just the latest revelation about the case that has already uh, that already has Californians furious. Further adding to the drama, the California Department of Corrections Rehill Rehab CDCR will hold a public hearing Thursday, April 14th. So it's already been held on a proposal to enact permanent regulations, which, according to Sacramento District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert, would result in the early release of thousands of violent offenders and nonviolent second strikers. Hmm, I wonder I wonder what happened. The period for submitting public comment closes on April 13th. April, it was, uh, by the way, the April 14th public hearing is a teleconference and it was opened to the public at 10 a.m. Let's see. Public hearing information mm. is here. Doesn't matter anymore because it's done. Yeah. So, so go down to the part where it says Smiley Martin 27. Yep. He was wounded in the shooting that left six people dead and 12 injured. He faced the charges of being a felon in possession of a firearm and possession of a machine gun. The second charge stems from the recovery of a stolen gun at the scene in downtown Sacramento, just two blocks from the state capitol. Which it was a been, stolen gun? What? Which had been illegally converted to fire full auto. What? But if that's against the law. Yeah. There's a law against we, that. We it, need more laws. It, it, it didn't happen. It also now appears that there are at least five shooters involved in the lethal incident. According to an update from Sacramento Police, Quote, evidence in the case indicates that at least five shooters fired guns during the shooting and that an exchange of gunfire took place between at least two groups of men. As detectives to continue to identify shooters and weapons involved, the number of identified shooters may grow beyond five. End quote. Make sure you identify the weapons. Yeah, so it sounds Make like. Make sure. You know. Yeah. The wild shootout is a gang related confrontation. Yeah, that's funny because Jared, I don't, and Zach, I don't, you probably don't remember. Because it's, it's happened so much, but I do remember getting seeing the my, on my phone the 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 media was blowing up when this happens. Mass murder, mass shooting in California, and I was like, okay. And then almost literally within hours, I like, shh, put that down the memory hole. I'm not talk about that anymore. Because what we're not supposed to talk about is how crime ridden San Francisco is. We're not supposed to talk about that, but they got all those good, reasonable laws. And, and uh, I'm surprised they didn't try and push the ghost gun thing here, but it was a stolen gun. You mean felons steal guns? They don't go to gun shops and fill out form 4473s? What? Come on, man. I mean, come on, man. And this was a a dazzling. Uh, what did they, what did Mel Brooks write in uh, Blazing Saddles? What is a dazzling urbanite like you doing in a, in a rustic setting such as this? Oh yeah. <laughs> what was a dazzling urbanite like Smiley Martin doing in a rustic setting like that? Like Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. So why was Smiley? You say, you know, he wouldn't have been on the street shooting it up if he would have still been in prison where he was supposed to be. Or you just can't. You just can't. You can't keep him in. You just can't put people in prisons. Well, you can put you can put Republican voters in prisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put you can put those those MAGA hat people with their pistol braces. Yeah, and their bump stocks. We'll put them in prison. Uh, Jared, one of the things that I really enjoy about this story about it says it says Californians are furious. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that they've uh, been furious for decades. That now. that uh, at least as far as I know. What what is, what is that that flatulent douchebag in in um in Sacramento? What what's his name? The the governor. Uh, governor douchebag. I, all I could think of Newsom. Newsom. That's it. Yeah. Governor Newsom. Uh, I'm sure Gavin Newsom is just. Oh, the people are mad. Oh boy, the people are mad. Maybe they'll recall me. 
<laughs> we own the elections. We own the voting machines. We own the process. You can be mad all you want. We're in control. Wow. Literally, wow. This is yet another. And I remember because I have a good memory, the millisecond this happened, the pundit started like, ah, machine guns and gun control. And and this is, uh, we need more gun control. <laughs> How about when you catch violent criminals, you actually make them stay in prison? How about that? No. There's, there's, you can't just make violent monstrous criminals stay in prison mm -hmm. you have to let them out on the streets so they can roam around amongst the people oh man uh. yep all right so let, let's go ahead and go down uh, mayor sacramento mayor daryl steinberg so in the face of this with what we know how it's the absolute abject failure of both Sacramento and California. What did, what did Steinberg say? It's, it's a Steinberg speaking at a press briefing. He said, uh, this is briefing following the shooting, demanded how many unending tragedies does it take before we begin to cure the sickness in this country? It's a great question. I don't know, douchebag. This is from, uh, it says, instead of Sacramento Gottlieb. Mayor, yeah, Gottlieb, instead of Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg and others calling for more gun control, the, this is from CC Citizens Right to Keep and Bear Arms Chairman Alan Gottlieb. In response, they should be demanding prison reform that keeps violent criminals behind bars instead of allowing early release. Politicians who support such policies are per perpetuating a system that ultimately poses more of a real danger to society than their imagined fears about private gun ownership. Yeah. And he is 100% correct. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So while these, these liberal scumbag politicians look out at you and I and say, you're the problem. If you would just accept more reasonable gun control restrictions, this wouldn't happen. How would it not happen? These are violent criminals. And in California, you can be a, a was it California or New, which which one was it where the guy like kept robbing banks? He would like he would like leave the police department and get in a cab and go to a bank and rob it. And then he like did that three times in a row. And they, they kept not keeping like, well, we can't just hold him in jail. That would be wrong and racist and mean. Like, yeah, but they're not going to stop. I think it was four you, banks in one day. <laughs> oh man america you might want to grab the wheel like america you guys are sitting in the passenger seat and the driver is an insane lunatic and it's gonna and he's gonna drive you uh, gavin newscom the new scum is he's he's at the wheel and he's about to drive you over a cliff y you guys might want to like punch him in the head and grab the wheel because uh, you're about to be driven over a cliff. It, it's amazing to me. And what's even more amazing is is the the propaganda machine that is the U.S. media. So we were instantly treated to, this is a crisis and more gun control, and oh, my gosh, oh, goodness me. And then they found out who did it and who was involved, and they're like, oh, moving on. All right, I, I think I found it. Uh, January 19th, 2020, a uh, man charged with four bank heists and freed. A man accused of robbing banks in New York City had been released it was New York. under a January <laughs> for, uh, 1 law that ended bail for most violent charges. Mayor Chase Bank wearing a Chicago's blah, 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 blah. The point is... Uh, four in one day. Four in one day, <laughs> and then was freed. He was going for a record. Drop that, <laughs> drop that story in the notes. <laughs> I wonder if that's a Guinness book. Possibly. I wonder, he's like, who who holds the record most bank robberies one day? This biatch right here. Mm -hmm. Who has two thumbs and robbed the most banks in one day? This guy. <laughs> 
Aren't you proud? You're so, I, people in New York City got to be so proud. They're so proud. Oh, man. It's crazy. And this goes, I mean, this goes right in with the, the New York sub, subway shooting. Remember? That broke and it's like, oh, there's a mass murder on the subway, mass shooting on the subway. And then they found out who it was that did it. And they're like, yeah, we're all done talking about that. Why are we done talking about that? Why, why don't we have a photograph? Why are you showing me pictures of cops standing around on the street when you have a suspect in custody? Where's his picture? Don't worry about it. But I am worried about it. Where's where's the guy? Don't worry about it. Oh, he's a black nationalist who's done all kinds of socialist media videos about how much he hates Whitey. And he was on the FBI's uh, watch list, but then they took him off of it. That's the guy that shot up the subway. Sounds like we need more gun control, huh, Jared? Mm -hmm. If we only had more gun control, this domestic terrorist who is on the FBI watch list who hates Whitey wouldn't have done that if we had more gun control. But there's a lot of gun control in New York. What are you talking about? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> America, you're being lied to every single day by the media. And you need to wake up and wake up your friends and wake up your neighbors and wake up your mush brain normie relatives and just share that with them. I would, I, and if I had a mush brain normie relative and they're like, well, I don't know about all that, I'd say, well, here's a story. What do you think? Do you think that, that, more gun control would have stopped this violent felon who was released. He didn't even do half. Didn't even do half. It used to be, you know, it's like, well, they, you know, if they get a 10 year prison sentence, they'll be out in seven. Yeah, they get a 10 year prison sentence. They're out in four. And, and their uh, life in prison actually means like 32 years. Doesn't it? Doesn't life mean you have to stay there till you die? No, no, no. What? You people be crazy. You people be crazy. Do we have any questions in the uh, the discordage? Questions, comments, concerns? Let me double check, but I do not believe we do. We do not. Guys, if you have any questions, now is your time to ask them. Now is the time. Time is now. It's like, yes. uh, it's like, that John, it's like John Cena's theme song. That's is is John Cena. What yeah. I thought his theme song was bah, No. I'm a baldest cock. <laughs> yeah. But he makes good movies. My balls shriveled up and fell off when I got to Hollywood. Something about you guys need to if you want to keep your testicles, don't stay out of Los don't go to Los Angeles. That's where Arlie Ernie did. He lived you know, like the, what, six hours outside of Los Angeles? Yeah, well, he didn't live that far. He only lived like he lived like two and a half or three hours outside of LA. Still, yeah, like he, far enough away he, where he couldn't get the stink on him. Yeah, he wouldn't. He didn't live around those people. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, all these guys: Batista, Dwayne Johnson, yeah, Cena. They all go out to Hollywood and they start hanging around those people, and their their testicles shrivel up like grapes, and they become little cuck boys for China. From what I, from what I heard, though, Dave Batista was always kind of a freaking we'll say a non-assertive personality mm. from all the interviews and stuff that i've heard about him that's just this is a shame it's a yeah. shame so, so no yeah. questions no questions no questions huh? no comments no concerns all right i mean we, right. we still got a couple of minutes before we fulfill our, our requirements, oh um, so, Jared, tomorrow anything on hand on mind uh, actually i need to i need to do a reminder oh dad do us a reminder please Yes. So, or actually, if you're listening in the days of future past or whatever, Wednesday, Wednesday, the 27th of April is the last Wednesday of the month, right? Correct. And you're like, okay, thanks for reminding me. At 5 p.m. Mountain, that is our Legion of Michael Q&A session. So if you are signed up uh, uh, for the Legion of Michael distance learning program, if you went to legionofmichael.com and you signed up for the church security uh, distance learning program, you'll get an invite 
in your inbox, in your email, it's reminding you that, that you can show up for a Zoom meeting. And it's, it's just a, a question and answer. It's a Q&A session. So um, this is my reminder to you guys. And maybe you're listening and you're like, what is this all about? And this is the first time hearing of it. Well, we have a program called the Legion of Michael, and it is a church security program. And you can do a distance learning course. We have the book, too. I've got the Legion of Michael book. But if you go to legionofmichael.com, uh, right now, enrollment is closed at this moment as I'm speaking. But you can get on the waiting list. So the moment that enrollment is open, you will be notified and you will be able to enroll. And something that we've been doing for I don't know, a couple of years now uh, is the last Wednesday of each month, we do a live Q&A session for uh, members who are enrolled. If you're not enrolled, you don't get to be in the Q&A. <laughs> if you're that's not enrolled, fair. what's wrong with you? Yeah, I mean, that's fair. If you're not a student, you don't need to be in the Q&A session. But uh, if you are, this is my reminder to you guys. All right? Yeah. All right. So uh, that was a, a show filled with stuff. <laughs> Indeed it was. Jared, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, yes, it was. I appreciate you guys being here. <laughs> Appreciate mm. you guys being here live. If you're not yeah. part of the Discord yet, like we said, go to studentofthegun.com slash Discord, and we appreciate it. Those of you that are listening live, if you don't know that we have, we've released this in podcast format. So Zach trims some of the live stuff that happens off. So uh, you guys get the experience that only live viewers get. But if you want to listen to a more succinct and um, I guess you could, what would you call it? A more uh, produced, <laughs> yeah, a better produced version <laughs> of the episode. Then you can let go subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use, Spotify, Spotify iTunes, Apple, iHeart whatever. Radio. Yeah, <laughs> go do that. You can get all those links from soonerthegun.com. Yep. And of course, we do so much. There's so much that I forget about. I'm like, I don't know how Dad produces so much content as one person. It's like enough for two teams of people to handle it's crazy yeah. many many yeah, many there's links many. to everything on studentofthegun.com you can get it yes. all there yes yeah, so if you just want to eat the sausage but you don't want to see how it's made that's that's <laughs> it's fair like, it's like i just want to eat the sausage i don't want to see how it's made uh that's fine that's fine you don't have to see how it's made <laughs> oh and I, i'm gonna give you guys a, a little teaser uh zach was over here visiting uh me for my birthday uh this last week weekend and uh we went out and we and it you know I, this is how much i love you freaks i care about you weirdos so much that I was willing to go out on my birthday in the snow, in the sleet, and film. We filmed. Uh, we, we, we filmed a bunch. And uh, we actually did a, a brain bucket helmet video. And we did a Cold War. If you guys are Cold War aficionados, or maybe you just play Call of Duty, Cold War, uh, we did a, a Cold War handgun series. And it was cold. It was so kind of like, you know. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and those are coming up real soon. We've got a ton of video content for you guys. Uh, and of course, written content as well. So make sure that you're signed up uh, for the Student of the Gun newsletter at very least. So you can remember to get access to all that stuff. All right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, it is all about control. In case you missed it, we have more proof for you. Uh, we've got, I, I, did you see what I said? You will stand and you'll be glad to pay for the privilege. This is coming to America. And if you don't believe me, see, I want to do this because people say, I don't believe you, Paul. 10 years ago, they said, I don't believe you, Paul. And this is when I say, I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. Oh, I'm putting on my amazing Kreskin Nostradamus hat. Yeah. But if you'd like to be with us tomorrow for the bonus hour, how can they do that, Jared? Is it, is it a Super secret? Super easy, yeah. It, well, it can be if you want it to be. I won't tell you. <laughs> you go to getsotg.com, follow the information there, all the directions, all the information about the programs there. You can choose from three different levels, actually two. One of them's invite only. Um, the grad program undergrad level is what gives you access to the bonus hours live and on demand. Yes. So go to get SOTG.com, check out the perks there. Um, I went there the other day and I was looking, I was like, oh yeah, we do that for them. That's, that's awesome of us. We, we I do forgot we did that. Great things for them. 
Yeah. And yes. one of the, actually one of the favorite things from, not from me, but from the audience, from you guys, all the grad program members, they say one of their favorite things is the access to the celebrity interviews that you can get on there. We've got a slew. I think there's 18 of them now in the queue. Uh, wow. They've already been produced. And so you can go there to the celebrity interview section. You can listen to all the historical celebrity interviews. And obviously, as long as you remember, you get access to the celebrity inter interviews that we do in the future, live and on demand. There you go. In the palm of your hand. There you go. And you can also listen to uh, other people who are just exactly like you and uh, read their reviews and listen to their recommendations and decide for yourself. Yes. So if you do all that, if you want to become a grad program member, we encourage you to. And we will be there tomorrow for you and we'll be there on Friday for you. But until then, remember, kids, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly connect with us on instagram facebook and twitter for new content each and every day at student of the gun watch student of the gun tv and videos from our trusted partners on roku apple tv amazon fire tv chromecast and even airplay go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember you're a beginner once a student for life